Sometimes I don't, and I catch myself, and I go, oh, yeah. 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 But, yeah, just, oh, yeah, just I'm going to wait on the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ye
enjoy feeling your chin about parallel to the floor so you feel real easy with your head up there. One more inhale. And then let your exhale bring you back around into center. We're going to switch our legs out. So take your time. And again, you know, it's the new hip. So if you need to adjust how you are, do. If you need to cross your ankle instead of your ankle above your knee. And then again, you decide if coming forward a little bit with a long back works for you. Coming to where you can be. Give it your breath. Feel kind of tight in your hip or maybe even in your back. See if you can imagine bringing your breath, breath to that place. Good. One more breath. And then we'll come on back up to the top. Take a nice inhale here. And on the exhale, we'll twist to our right. So bring your left hand maybe to your knee. Maybe not, you know, maybe just to your shin. Depends on you how far you want to twist. And enjoy. Feel that length upward again. Feel space in the back of your neck and your throat. And that will probably keep you from lifting your chin up. One more inhale. And on the exhale, come on back around through center and all the way into the other direction. Again, just enjoy that kind of swiveling in the spine there. Good, then one more breath. Let your exhale bring you on back around into center. And let's uncross our legs. Now, if you're on the floor, stretch both your legs out in front of you. If you're in your chair, put your feet on the floor. We're gonna come forward, right, into a little bit of a seated forward bend. So you all on the floor, if it feels better to bend your knees to come forward from your low back, do. Might be you're coming forward an inch, right? Some of you might want to reach for your toes. And in your chair, you're welcome to separate your feet and bring your hands down further if that feels okay in your back. Don't force it. Let it feel good. See if you can let your head release so you're not tensing up your neck. Let go through your face. And let your jaw go. One more breath. And then we're going to, again, slowly make our way on up. And let yourself release your arms out beside you. And we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. And now slide your hands over to the right, in front of your right shoulder, and tilt your head to the left. Let your left ear come towards your left shoulder. And then inhale your way back up to center with everything, hands and head both, and just go the other way. Let yourself tilt the head away from the way the hands are going. And then come up, and one more time, we'll go to the other side, to the first side again. Let yourself just release to the side. And then inhale back up, and just go the other way. Let your shoulder move. And then come on back into center. Seated mountain. Just let yourself here feel your sitting bones reaching down, the crown of the head reaching up. And then we'll release our arms on down. Shake out. We're going to come around towards our hands and knees. You know you don't need to be on your hands and knees. If you don't want to be, use your chair. Use a blanket if you prefer underneath your knees so that you're not on the floor. And you know, if your wrists bother you, another way to do cat-cow actually is to be on your forearms, whether you have like forearms above your knees like this, or forearms on your chair, or even on the floor, right? So you can move through your spine without putting pressure into your wrists or your hands if it bothers you. So take your time, let yourself just start to, start really kind of little, Feel like your cat cows are like baby cat cows. You're not going into deep, deep curves. You're just barely feeling your tailbone initiate and you roll up a little bit into your cat. Move through into kind of like a little mini cow so that you're focusing on these really tiny little movements of the spine. 
Have you ever you feel like, huh, I'd really like to go fully more into my cat cow so that I have deeper curves, right? You can do that. And if not, go ahead and stay with those little ones if that feels really good. Imagine all those muscles alongside of the spine getting warmed up. And then think about how your spine is built. Imagine what it does right now as you move through your spine this way, through these curves. Finish off the one you're on, and then come back to the more neutral spine again. And let's come on into our lunges, stepping our left foot forward and our right foot back. And you know your hands can be up any height you want to be, on a chair, on blocks, any height. So if you are on the blocks, you know, you might want to be lowest height, you might want to be the highest height. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears and let yourself enjoy. Engage your belly a little bit so you feel that sense of you're not just down into your legs, but you're engaging, as you engage your core, all right, you're stretching your legs at the same time. We're going to switch our legs out. So however you want to come to the other side, Make sure that alignment of that front knee is good. You're not bending the knee out farther than your ankle. How long of a stance you take is totally up to you. Opening up through the back of the left leg. Feel again that little zip up of the low belly. Good, and we're going to switch again. Again, feel those feet in the floor. Imagine you're trying to make your mat longer with your feet so they press away from each other just to come a little deeper. And we're going to switch legs one more time. So coming into that lunge, and again, if you can press your feet a little away from each other like you're trying to make your mat longer, do. And we're going to step forward from here and come into standing forward bend with our feet, hips distance apart and parallel. Be very mindful of your back. So if you need support, use it. Elbows above the knees. If you'd like to have your hands up on the blocks or forearms on your chair or hands on your chair, let your head hang if possible. And, and maybe even just turn your head a little side to side. So you just look from the right to the left a little bit. Feeling the weight of your head. And come on back into center. Feel the feet equal in the floor now. As you press into your feet, bend your knees and rise on up to standing. And we'll inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. So take your time coming into your mountain pose. Get your feet underneath. You walk a little bit if you need to. Get yourself set up there as best you can. Good. And then close your eyes just for a second. Even if you don't normally close your eyes, see if you can close your eyes just briefly. Feel that sense of getting stacked up with your hips over your ankles, shoulders over your hips. You're aligned in your pelvis so the tailbone is reaching down towards between your heels. And then if you want to open your eyes, go right ahead. If you like your eyes closed, keep your eyes closed. Let yourself feel that sense of reaching up through the top of your head, space in your spine. Let's unfold our arms on down beside us and inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on the exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into your standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you find a nice, long, flat back. Really find that flat, long spine. We're going to step our right foot back now and come into lunge. And inhale, exhale into your downward facing dog pose. Now your down dog is totally up to you. Whether your hands are on the chair or blocks or the floor, let yourself reach back through your tailbone to find the length of your spine here now. So not everybody's shoulders want their upper arms to be by their ears. So don't be worried about that. Just think about lengthening out through your spine. Bend your knees if you need to. And on your next inhale, come on out towards a plank, a push-up pose. Now, you don't have to go into a full plank. You can put your knees down and do a half. 
You can go to forearms and get out of your hands. You're more than welcome to bend your elbows, let yourself come into push-ups if you want to. Maybe even just a little bit of the bend of the elbows, totally up to you. And then we'll come on back into downward facing dog pose. So reaching back, again, through your tailbone, through your sitting bones. Hug your elbows towards each other. Let yourself feel as equal as you can through the sides of your body. And then this time we'll bring our right foot forward. Now you can put your left knee down or both knees down if you need to. Step that right foot forward or come up and then back to the lunge. Whatever works. And then we'll step into standing forward bend with our feet. Hips distance apart and parallel. And again, only you know how you feel in a forward bend. Don't force anything. You, you'll feel a stretching at the back of your legs. You don't want to feel a pulling, right? You don't want to feel like you're pulling way up by your sitting bones. There's just a gentle stretch that happens as your torso is forward. And then full breaths. Focus on your full deep breaths here. Feeling the ribs expand when you breathe in. See if you can let yourself feel your inhales and exhales come closer to the same length. Good. And then let's let our hands come back up to our hips. Bend our knees and rise on up to standing. And inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. And now clasp your hands together. Really squeeze your palms together. Let your elbows just kind of softly come down a little bit. And then go ahead and turn the palms right away from your chest. And imagine, so your thumbs face down, right? And your pinkies are kind of up. Imagine you're trying to pull your hands apart, but don't let them come apart. So you're like really squeezing your fingers towards each other. And then start to gently press out from the chest with the hands, pressing out into the heels of your hands. And then imagine as you start to rise up, really pay attention to your shoulders, only go as high as you can. Just imagine the shoulders feel pretty good as far as you can get up there with your hands. And then come over to the left a little bit. Press up into the heel of your right hand. Let yourself feel your right foot pressing down into the floor. And then we'll come back up through center and we're gonna go to the other side. So pressing into the heel of that hand, that left hand and pressing into your left foot on the floor. And then we'll come on back up to the top. Now, if your neck doesn't bother you, you can look up when you inhale. And then release your hands. And as you exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into that standing forward bend again. Let your next inhale find your flat, long back, like a tabletop back. And we'll step the left foot back and come into lunge. Into our second sun salutation now. So again, find your lunge. Be safe here with that front knee bend. Let yourself draw your shoulders away from your ears. Good. And then we'll come on into downward facing dog pose from here. So take your time. Again, your dog is your dog. Does not matter what it looks like. You want to feel good in your dog. So you don't want discomfort in your shoulders, certainly. You want to feel that length of your spine. And on the next inhale, come on towards the plank. Again, you don't have to do a full plank. You don't have to... Come out at all, just a little bit if you want, or you can put your knees down, you can put your forearms down. Again, if you like to do little push-ups, you can bend your elbows and play a little bit with upper body strength there, or you can focus on the core of the body, staying in your plank pose there. And then we'll come on back again into downward facing dog pose. So you might have to adjust your feet, right? As you go from plank to dog or back again, just let yourself adjust. And this time we'll bring the left foot forward to come into lunge. So again, get a line there with that front knee. Draw your shoulders away from your ears. Good. And then we'll step forward again to, into standing forward bend. And just go right to your breath. I know some of you really like to fold over your legs because that feels good. And some even like to hold your elbows. Or put your hands behind your legs if you want, onto your calves. But just be mindful. Letting your support be where you need it. Feeling that 
ease of releasing your head. Let your face be soft. Good. And then we'll bend our knees and bring our hands to our hips. We're going to rise on up and inhale our arms out and up overhead. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Let's sit back into a little chair pose. And you don't need to go deep. Your hips shift back, your body comes a little forward. Now, you don't want to tuck your tailbone up on you, right? You're reaching your tailbone back. So there's that tilt right here in your pelvis. You're not trying to keep your tailbone dropping down. It reaches back. And you can go deeper if you want, shifting your weight a little more to your heels. If you want just a little more in your quads and your hips there. Nice and strong. Good. One more breath. Feel the feet equal in the floor. Press into the feet. Come on back up. Inhale your hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms like wings as you come back into your standing forward bend. Let your next inhale lengthen out into that flat back. And we're going to come into down dog, however you choose to get there. So place your hands how you like on whatever surface you like to use. And then come on out again towards that plank. And again, this is all optional and you know it. You can do a back bend here. If you want to come down and go onto your forearms and do a sphinx or come into a little cobra or move through for an up dog. You don't need to do a back bend at all. And then we'll come on back into downward facing dog pose. Walk a little in your dog if you can. Bend one knee at a time. Feel your elbows hugging in towards each other like you're holding a, a big beach ball there between your elbows. And then come on back to full dog and we're going to come out again towards that plank. And again, it is optional to add a back bend here. You can stay in plank, you can do the little push-ups if you like, you can come through to a back bend of choice. Good, and then we'll come on back again into downward facing dog pose. And let's bring our right foot forward to come into lunge. Again, how you get there makes no difference. And then we'll come on back into standing forward bend. Feet hips distance apart, parallel. Be mindful when you come forward into your forward bend. And think about relaxing all through, all around your eyes, and like across your forehead even. Imagine your forehead is just smoothing. And to let go of the jaw, sometimes just letting your teeth separate a little bit. Good. One more breath. And then we'll let our hands come back up to our hips. We're going to bend our knees and rise up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And on our exhale, let our hands come down as the top of the head reaches up, coming into mountain pose. And let yourself look down at your hands for a second. And take your hands a little away from your chest, forward, so they're not touching anymore, right? And then on your next exhale, let the thumbs come just where they want to come in towards your breast cone. It's, there's no right or wrong height for your hands, just so it feels really easy when you start to bring your gaze back forward. You feel like your hands are not too high, not too low. There's this place where they just want to like plug in. And then just enjoy feeling your feet in the floor. Feeling that sense of the thighs engaging upward like you're just creating some space in your knees. The tailbone drops down. You can feel stacked up there. And it's easy. Mountain pose is strong but quiet and, and kind of effortless really. Go ahead and let our arms come on down beside us and move around however you need. If you need to move through your feet, I'm going to flip my chair around. We're going to come into some warriors, so make sure you have your blocks handy there at the front of your mat. Well, we're going to step our right foot back and come into warrior two. Now, to come into warrior two, you don't have to step your feet way far apart, right? So that right foot is about parallel to the back edge of your mat. You line your heels up and your left foot is parallel to the long edge. So 
Still, when you bend that front knee, you don't want to look down and not be able to see your toes. So make sure you're bent enough to where you feel the knee is over the ankle there or a little back from it, right? And then start to float your arms on up and out and reaching out through your fingertips. Drop your shoulders down if you can. Feel like you're reaching out through the tips of your fingers equally, both your left hand and your right hand. And feel the feet really in the floor, pressing gently away from each other so you feel very balanced between your feet and your legs. Good, we're gonna turn our left palm up, bring our right hand to our right leg and slide your right hand down as the left hand comes up. Let yourself come as far as you want, but then breathe into your left side of the body here. And if your neck bothers you, don't look up. Right? If it feels good to look up, you can add your gaze upward. If not, look forward or down even. And on your next exhale, come into your side angle, where your left hand or forearm can come onto your thigh. And you can use your chair if you want for your hand. And you can bring that right arm up if your shoulder lets you. Otherwise, you can keep your right hand down on your hip. So you can feel that length through both sides of the body. Good, alignment of that front knee, beautiful. One more breath. And we're gonna come on back into warrior two now, pressing the feet gently away from each other. And now straighten your front knee out and bring your hands down. And then let your left hand come down as you come out over that front leg, maybe to your chair. You may not even wanna go very low in triangle. You may decide you want to bring your hand down lower, but you don't want to do that by curving your spine, right? Your spine is still lengthened. And you can put your right hand on your hip, draw your right shoulder up towards the ceiling. And if you want to add that top arm, you can bring it straight up from your shoulder if you want to add the arm. Otherwise, you can keep your hand down. Triangle pose, thighs engaging up towards the hips. So you're again thinking of creating space in your knees. Good, we're gonna come into warrior two again. Bend that front knee, bring yourself on back into your warrior two. Now bring your hands down and turn your feet parallel. Now how wide is kind of up to you? Get your feet parallel. And then once you're pretty set with your legs, bring your arms on out beside you for a second. Straight out from your shoulders, reach out through your fingertips. And try to be aware of your pelvis here now. Make sure you're not tucking your tailbone forward, which makes your upper back round into the, you know, very uncomfortable. So reach your tailbone back and down a little, down and back a little bit. And now put your right hand on the outside of your right thigh and lift your left arm up and come into a side stretch right from here. See if you can let that right hand slide down a little bit down your leg. Let yourself breathe into your left side body and then come on back up and lower your left arm down, rise your right arm up, and then slide your left hand down the outside of your left leg. Coming into side stretch now. Good, and then come on back up to the top, and from here, lower your arms on down. Now, if you need your blocks for a wide-legged forward bend, you can grab, grab your blocks as you come on forward, and get yourself down with your hands to the surface you wanna use. Once you're there, bend both your knees for a second and let your spine come long, flat. So that same flat back as when we in it, are in our forward bends and come into that flat, long back. So you can keep your hands down on blocks. You can put your elbows above your knees if you want. But think about coming into that length of your spine. Good. And then go ahead and let yourself release back to walking over towards the right a little bit. So you might want to use your blocks or you might want to just walk with your hands on the floor towards your right foot. Come where you can. Take a couple of breaths. Just let yourself feel the legs adjusting and the hips. And then we'll come back through center. And we'll walk to the left. So again, how far you go, totally up to you. Remember, knees can both be bent or knees can be straight. But just try to think about them staying fairly equal. And then come on back into center again. And now set yourself up to stay here with your breath a while. And that might mean that you want to let your blocks stack up and get out of your hands. You know, you can always get your forearms onto blocks. You can use your elbows above your knees if you'd like. Or you can let your hands walk down and sort of back towards between your feet. 
depends on you and your back. And now receiving these full breaths, see if you can let yourself take a few breaths to find those little spaces between your breaths. So when you inhale, feel that little space before you exhale. It's not like you're trying to hold your breath, though. And the same thing at the end of your exhale. There's that little tiny space before you inhale. Just be aware of those spaces. See if you can let your breath just be nice and long and deep. Releasing into those spaces between your breaths. Good. One more breath. Now, before you come up, if you need to adjust how far apart your feet are, go right ahead and do that. And you can use your hands to help you on your thighs to rise on back up. And if you're dizzy, be mindful. Keeping your legs wide sometimes helps as you adjust. You can bring your feet together and move around however you need. And we're going to do the other side. So this time it'll be the left foot that steps back. So again, whether you step your feet a foot and a half apart or two feet or three feet, it doesn't matter. It's still the same alignment. That knee is bent out no further forward. So you'd be able to see your toes right out there over your ankle. And then reach your arms on up and out, straight out from your shoulders and bring your hands just a tiny bit higher if you can. Let your shoulders melt down. And then lower the hands to where it feels real easy to look right out over the top of your right hand there. Reaching out through the fingertips without tightening up in the tops of your shoulders. It's really like your arms are held up from underneath. And see if you can imagine trying to make your mat longer with your feet so you feel that sense all the way up into your hips and into the core of your body. And then from here, we'll turn that right palm up. Left hand comes to your leg. Let the left hand slide down and let that just bring the right arm up a little bit. And breathe. Once you get up as high as you want to go, breathe into that right side. Good. On your next exhale, coming into that side angle, you're keeping your right knee bent. You can bring your right hand to your chair. You can bring it to your thigh or you can go down to your forearm. And you can decide whether the left arm wants to come up or not, right? Left hand can stay on your hip. You can bring the arm up if you want into line with the left side of the body. Or if your shoulder wants to do a little bit but not all that much, it can come up from your shoulder like we do in triangle if you like. You're going to come on back into warrior two from here, pressing the feet away from each other. And then we're going to straighten the front leg out and bring our hands down and find our triangle pose. So whether you want to have the chair under your hand to lengthen the underside of your body, remember, is what you're trying to do. The spine is still long, not curved. Thighs are engaging up. And you're more than welcome to bring your left arm up if you want, straight up from your shoulder, so that you have those three points of the triangle, your top shoulder or hand and your two feet. Good, we're gonna bend the right knee and come on back into warrior two. Take your time, really again, feeling the feet in the floor. Good, we're gonna bring our hands down. We're gonna turn our feet more parallel. And this time we're just gonna come on forward. So take your time, bend your knees as much as you want as you come on forward. If you need your blocks, get them. And now if you're okay to bend a knee at a time, once you get your hands down, go ahead and do it. If that hurts your knees or bothers your knees, don't do it. So take your time, let yourself release a little bit if possible, bending one knee at a time, feeling your inner thighs a little bit more. Good. And then come back into center and see if you can bring your heels forward a little bit so your legs are now turned out a bit. And bend your knees a little from there. You can have your hands still right down on whatever height you want to be. Right? If you're like, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't be that low, you can put your hands above your knees and still be kind of forward. So it's like goddess legs, but we're forward here. <laughs> Good. 
And then come up into straighter legs and turn your toes forward again. And now you're in back into that more parallel. And set yourself up here to be with your breath again. So whether you feel like you want to bring your forearms to your block stack or you know, some of you might even want to put your head down on a block or block. Some of you might want to hold your ankles. You know, if that feels good, you can bring your hands to your ankles or between your feet. And of course, if anyone likes to bring their hands up on their low back, if you like to let your arms kind of come out of the picture, you can put your hands up on your low back. So just release into your breath. Again, see if you can. Imagine you're relaxing in those little spaces between your breaths. Nice. And one more full deep breath. Soft face. Rise up. Again, it is up to you. You can bring your feet closer together before you come up if you need to. And if you're dizzy, be really mindful. Take your time. Walk around a little bit if you want. And now we're going to come into bringing our blocks or our chair turned with the seat of the chair to face it. Okay? And your blocks to the highest height. So you're going to bring your hands down either to your blocks, highest height, or your chair seat. And you're going to step the right foot back and come into lunge first. So just find a lunge. Take your time. Whatever height you feel like you want your hands, you've got your right foot back into a lunge. Good. And then we're going to come into pyramid from here. We're going to bring that right foot in enough to lower the heel down to the floor, turned in a little bit. So your back foot is turned out maybe 20, 30 degrees. Both legs are now coming straight and both feet are fully on the floor. So get that right heel all the way down. If that means you need to shorten your stance, shorten your stance. But lengthen out through your spine here. Really feel that sense of finding that flat back. And then see if you can bring your left hand up to your left hip and maybe even roll that shoulder up, bringing your hand right flat onto your sacrum there. Lengthen out through the top of your head. Try to stay rare, fairly level right where your hand is here on your sacrum. And then come on back down. Let your hand come on back down. If anyone wants to fold over that front leg, you can. If it feels good to bow forward, you can. Not if it doesn't. And then come up. We're going to bend the front knee, step forward with our right foot, and step back into lunge with our left foot. So that ought to feel like a pretty good stretch to come into lunge after that. Take your time for a breath there. And then we're going to head into pyramid pose on this side. So that back foot will, for most people, have to come in, shorten your stance a little bit, and then bringing the foot to the floor with the heel turned slightly inward. And the thighs are going to engage upward, and you're going to work on finding that flat back. Good. And then when you're ready to bring your right hand up to your hip and you roll that shoulder up, there's a twist right there in the middle of the back. Don't force it. Let yourself go where you can. You'll really feel probably the outside of that right leg a little more. Good. One more breath. And then bring your right hand down. Now if you want to bow over that front leg, go for it. And let yourself fold forward. That's only if it feels better and not worse, right? Good. And then come on back up. Bend the front knee. Let's step our feet all the way underneath us. And then widen your feet towards the outside edges of your mat. And bend your knees. And let yourself. Now, some of you might want to squat all the way down, right? You can, if you want, just put your elbows above your knees and let your hips release right up here. Or you can, if you want, kind of turn your heels inward and let yourself squat down. If squats feel great for your low back and your hips, not everybody's knees will squat, right? Or hips. 
So you got to find what works for you, what feels good in your hips and your low back. Good. And then we're all going to come on back up to get our feet underneath us so that your hips distance apart now and parallel with your feet. And then bring your hands on up to your hips and press into your feet and rise on up to standing and inhale your arms all the way out and up. And let your exhale bring your hands right down together in front of your heart. Finding your mountain pose. So again, feel your hands coming to a place that feels just right. Be aware of feeling your hands gently coming together, each finger, your thumbs, whatever part of your palms touch. And then feel connected there through your feet into the floor. Enjoying that mountain pose. Good. We're going to release our arms on down beside us and shake out a little bit. Take your time. Move around a little bit. We're going to leave our mats right where they are, but we are going to walk to a wall. Bring a block with you, okay? And walk to where, it doesn't have to be a wall, it can be a bookcase or whatever, right? Where, where you can just put your left hand to the wall. Yeah, good. So, are you okay there, Larry? You can come there if you want. Okay, so, so bring your block with your left hand, left hand to whatever support you're using. There you go. And bring your block to the floor between your left foot and the wall. Now it can be, you can decide what height because you're gonna cross your right foot over to that block, right? So you're crossing your right thigh over your left. You know if this is too much for you, don't do it. Maybe just standing right there is enough. Like lengthening up through the crown of your head. If you feel like you wanna bring your hands to your heart, you can stay there and balance. Good, and now bring your left hand back to the wall and let your right arm come out and up overhead. And then just lean towards the wall coming into side stretch for that right side. And again, you know, if this is too much for your knees or anything, don't do it. Put both your feet on the floor if you need to. We're gonna come on back up and then from here, let your arm come on down. And now, if any of you wanna come back like you're coming into chair pose, it's like your, your back left thigh comes towards your right front thigh and you sit back a little bit with your hips and forward a little with your torso. Don't do this if it's too much in your knees. It is an eagle pose. You can bring your hands together in front of your heart if you want to. You can let your hands stay on the wall. If your thighs are really tight towards each other, kind of squeeze them together a little bit. You can add your eagle wrap, left arm over right if you want to. You can do a hug, you can do a wrap, you can do none of the above. You can hold on to the wall for dear life and then come on back up. We're gonna turn around. So shake out a little bit. So I'm getting into the hips here. And again, if you can't bring your left thigh over to put your foot on the block, don't do it. If you're okay to do that, See if you can, for a second, stand up straight. Maybe even bring your hands to your heart so you're kind of balanced here. If not, don't do it. Keep your hand on the wall if you feel unsteady. And then put your right hand back to the wall. Lift your left arm out and up overhead, and we're going to come into that side stretch. So reaching towards the wall. You might want to reach your fingertips all the way to touch the wall. It depends on how far away from it you are, obviously. <laughs> Breathing into that left side. Good. We're going to rise back up and lower that arm down. And now if you want to do this part, bending that right knee, shifting your hips back, kind of squeezing your right thigh up towards your left so the thighs are really squeezing towards each other. So you can decide whether you want to let go of the wall or not. Hands can go to your heart or you can keep your hand on the wall. You can bring your right arm over your left and do an eagle, hugging or wrapping, whatever feels good to you. Good. And then we're going to slowly rise on back up and walk away from the wall. Walk around through your feet. We're actually going to go back to our mat, so you'll have to walk anyway. So get your block with you so you can bring it back. 
And then we're going to come down onto our bellies on the floor. So let yourself release on down. Take your time. When you get down, if you can, stay up on your forearms and do a little sphinx pose. Do. And just be really mindful as you're there. Feel that openness through the front of the body. Good. And just very easily, let your head turn a little from side to side. Maybe even bring your face down so that you look towards the ground more when you're turning your head for a second. And then start to bring your gaze up so you're looking maybe a little more towards the front edges, corners of your mat. And then finish off back at center, looking there between your hands, maybe a little towards the front of your mat. Good, and let's bring our hands together and interlace the fingers, send your pinky finger out, bend your knees and lift your hips to a half forearm plank. Pressing into your forearms there. Now pull yourself towards the front of your mat so you're really on the flesh above your knees. And let yourself enjoy finding that core strength there. And if it's too much, you can come down. If you want more, you can put your feet down and lift your knees up and do a full forearm plank. That part is up to you. And if you need to rest and then try to come back up again, do. Feel the outside edges of your hands pressing into the floor and your forearms and your elbows. And imagine you're hugging your elbows towards each other a little bit. And when you've had entirely enough of that, bring yourself on down. And now stretch your right hand out to the right, right out from your shoulder on the floor. And then let your left hand come in like you're going to do a push-up with your left hand, right? So your right arm is out. Now what, now you can watch, I'm going to press into my left hand and roll a little bit onto my side and let my head stay on the floor so that I feel this stretch. Now this is shoulder, be really mindful, don't push it. So don't go too far. You might want to barely come over a little bit. Some of you might want to bend your left knee and put your foot on the floor behind your right leg. It opens across the front of your chest, but it's also really into your shoulder, as you can tell. We're going to roll on back into center. And all you're going to do is bring your right hand in and stretch your left arm out. And again, now when you start to roll, you'll kind of decide, do I want my arm right where it is? Do I need that left arm to come down a little? You can do that. You can change like the higher the arm. And you can put the foot on the floor behind you if you want to, behind your right leg. That'll add into the hip if you want to add something instead of just the shoulder and across your chest. Good. We're going to roll back to our bellies again. And then from here, let your arms release on down beside you. Turn your palms down towards the floor. Have your hands on the floor, not on your mat. So they're out a little ways. And then when you inhale, float into a little locus. I mean, you're just barely bringing your head off the floor and your hands, your feet. You know, maybe into your thighs, maybe not. And then come back down. Let everything relax. Try to let yourself breathe into your low back. Good. And now let's inhale again up into that locus. You can go a little higher if you want this time. So maybe the hands want to come up a little higher. Maybe the chest. Letting yourself feel that back body nice and strong. Good, and then we're going to release back down again. Turn your head to the right so your left cheek is on the floor. And rotate your palms up towards the ceiling, which is going to have your shoulders melt down towards the ground. Let them do it. Let it feel good. Let your legs release too, your hips. And if you're like, oh my gosh, this does not feel good in my neck. I know that feeling. Um, you can kind of lift your head and change the angle of your head. Or even think about putting your ear closer down towards the ground. So all those things kind of change how it feels in your neck. Now we're going to come up and we're going to go the other side with our head. So when you turn the other way, you may have been fine or not fine on the other side to find just the opposite on this one, right? So try to get to where you're halfway comfortable and you can just relax and breathe. Breathe into your low back. Good. 
and then let yourself come on back again up onto your forearms into that little sphinx pose so bring in your hands down so that the palms face down really spread your fingers wide and you can stay here in sphinx if you want to go a little higher you can release your body down to slide your hands back by your upper chest Press into your hands and come up into a cobra pose if you want to. Letting the elbows hug in towards your ribs. If not, don't do it. Stay in that sphinx pose. Sometimes cobra just feels like a huge relief to people. Sometimes it feels just the opposite. So whatever you're doing right now, we are going to shift back towards pose of a child. So if you're in cobra, it almost feels like wonderful to just shift back from there. But let yourself be as supported as you need. If you need to keep your hips up in the air, you can have yourself forward onto your forearms. If you're fine to let your hips continue back towards your heels, just be mindful of what your knees feel like. You can release, if you want, you can put your hands under your head like a pillow. You can do that if your hips are up high too. Or you can, if you're comfortable, and your hips are back and it feels okay to bring your arms back alongside your legs, you can do that. Bringing your arms back so that the palms face up. Everybody is different in child pose and how it feels. Remember, it is a release for your low back and your hips, not something that makes you feel discomfort in your knees or your hips or your back. So nice full breath. Feel the expansion of the low back as you inhale. rise up you can use your hands to help you we're going to come around to sitting so uh, make your way around with your legs and if you need to grab something to sit on do it All right so you may decide that you want to grab a blanket you may decide you want to sit up on a block right but let's try this you can keep your left leg long and bring your right leg lower leg in towards you for a second so you know how we started with those figure four see if you can kind of draw your leg up a little bit and then just rock it a little back and forth. So you're thinking about letting your hip release here. And you can hug it in more towards you if you want. I mean, some of you might want to like cradle your leg like that, you know, and bring it up by you. But you don't want to sit like this, right? So only if you can let your back stay long do you bring the leg in closer to you. Let yourself, good. That, let that one release on down and all we're going to do is do the other legs. So again, it's like just kind of giving your leg a little bit of love here and rocking, rocking the baby back and forth. Again, if it feels good to draw your leg in more, don't push it. Don't, again, it's not like you want to feel a discomfort in your hip. It's a stretch if you bring it in closer a little bit, but it's not anything that you feel like a deep pulling sensation. leg and then we'll bring it on out good let your feet circle around a little bit both directions and then let's bring our feet in come into a little bhakanasana you know you can let your let your feet come out so you have like a diamond shape in here or you can bring your feet in closer as long as it doesn't do this just like we talked about when you were rocking your leg you want to be able to lengthen up so Take your time if you need blocks underneath your knees because you're feeling really clenchy in your hips. Use those blocks so that you can instead find a release in your hips, right? And then maybe some of you, it might feel like a huge relief to bring your torso forward. That's not true for everyone. Some, it's really hard because of the way you're built to sit up at all. You can always put your hands behind you if that helps you sit up tall. Or you can let yourself come forward if that feels good. So take your time. Just be where you find the, the best feeling in your hips here. Good. Now this 
part is totally optional. You can stay sitting right here or forward. Some of you might feel like it'd be fun to lift your feet up and lean back a little bit. It's a balance, right? But it's not a balance for everybody. So only if that feels good and you don't feel like you're curling your tailbone forward like that, right? Same thing. You're sending your tailbone down. You feel how your belly has to work to do that? Now, I mean, you can play from there. You can let your feet come apart. Let yourself try to balance there. Again, don't do something that you'll be sorry for, especially rolling back and banging your head into the ground. And then you can stretch your legs longer if you want and let yourself feel that length of your spine, right? Not everybody's legs want to come longer. Just, just play with it. Don't even do anything at all. Keep your feet down if you want. Good. And then we're going to bring ourselves back down and stretch our legs on out and bring them apart just a little bit. And then just slide your hands down your legs. And it might be just this far where you come forward. Or some of you might want to reach down towards your toes. Let yourself feel the backs of the legs. Now, think of your knees and your toes facing up towards the ceiling, though. So you're not rolling your legs backwards, right, or inwards. So that, ha that all, again, has to do with how you're built, too. So take it easy. Good. And then come on up and bring your legs on together. Shake them out just a little bit. And we're going to come down onto our backs on the floor from here. So take your time. Come down. Let yourself bring your knees on into your chest. Let your knees come side to side. down to the floor. Let's do just a little bridge pose, but start with a little. So bring your feet like you think you like for bridge. You know, you may have your heels in fairly close towards your buttocks, or they might be farther away. And you can let your feet, remember, be a little wider than mountain pose, but you still want them parallel. And then at first, bring your arms on down beside you. Bend your elbows. Let your elbows be as close as you can in towards your body. And let your palms face each other like a robot. Spread your fingers out, too. And now just press down really firmly into the backs of your upper arms and your shoulders. See if you can lift up and roll your shoulders under more. And then keep pressing into the backs of your arms and float your way up. Just a little bit. Don't go as high as you usually do. Press down into your feet. Be lower than usual with your hips. And then see if you can lift your heels up right there. And then see if you can maybe lift your hips up higher with your heels up. So remember, you're going to feel your quads right here. You don't want to feel your back. Nothing as far as discomfort in your back. Now, if you can lower your heels back down, do keeping your hips where they are. And then bring yourself on back down to the floor. Release for a second. Let the knees just go a little bit side to side. Good. And then come on back into center and let yourself do a couple of little pelvic tilts. So when you exhale, you curl your tailbone up, you feel your low back come into the floor. And when you inhale, you send your tailbone down, you feel that curve come back into your low back. So really releasing with a couple more of those little easy pelvic tilts here. And then finish off back into your neutral spine. And again, bend your elbows, press into your arms here, and rise up into your bridge. Now, those of you who are like, well, I, I want to let my arms go low, and I'm really tired of the bent elbows, you can stretch your arms down to the floor. You can press your palms down into the floor. You can grab a block if you want and come into supported bridge. So if you would rather release into this pose and be supported by all means do and if you'd like to move up and down out of bridge pose do that as well you can you can do that using a block too you can be on the block and lift up and down off of it or you can relax totally onto the block and some of you are already lifting your legs up in the air and you know, playing a little bit when you're supported on your block. If you'd like to do a 
lengthening leg down on the floor to stretch the front of your hips out, you can. Or you can if you want, you know, bring your legs up in the air, do little leg lifts, and feel your core body. Just start to listen to what your body wants you to do right now. Right? And that could be anything. You, know? you may decide, well, it's not staying in bridge right now. So come down if you need to. Take your time. And So wave at me if you think of old breath quiets, really the body follows along, really wants to, and so does your mind, takes maybe a little bit of, a little more to get there with that. Just focus though, back to your breath, over and over again. Finding those little quiet places, and giving yourself time here. Completely and fully relaxed.
not forcing to receive your breath in a little deeper. Imagine those deeper breaths starting to refresh you so that when you start to physically move, it feels like time, like the wiggle your fingers, your toes, and move into hands and feet, maybe even your wrists, your ankles want to move around a circle and come into your arms and legs, however it feels good to move, stretching or bringing your knees up and in. Really take your time. You know you're welcome to stay on your back. You're welcome to roll to either your right or your left side into the knees being soft, the fetal position there on your side. And you can stay there for a few breaths to give your body and your brain time to adjust if you're comfortable to do that. You can even use your arm as a pillow if you'd like. Of course, when you do feel ready to come to sitting, be really easy when you come on up to get comfortable in how you're sitting, comfortable for your hips, and able to lengthen up through the top of your head, feel your head floating up there on top. Let your shoulders feel nice and wide and open. And let your next exhale bring your hands to meet in front of your chest, in front of your own heart. And wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.